All right, so I've got a bunch more done. There's still a lot left to do, and this is not finished, but I've got a lot more added to um, the color editing for edit mode. Um, uh, Frederick's been helping me out a lot. He provided a lot of code, um, given you know, a lot of guidance. Um, so none of this, again, is possible without him. But um, one of the goals with edit mode was to make it so you can do all of your editing on your saber. Um, so this color editing is a new part of edit mode that's taken a while to put together. But now it's, it's coming together nicely, and I wanted to kind of give a demo of it. Um, there's still a lot in the works, particularly some of the controls and the, how sensitive it is. Um, I'm kind of still really trying to find the Goldilocks zone on everything. Um, but the idea with color editing is it's very different than color change. Um, and I'm going to show that in a minute. But with color editing, you're not going to be able to only just edit the color in terms of your color wheel, your RGB settings. Um, I've made it so that you also can have the white setting, so you can brighten your blade all the way up to white, or you can dim almost down to near black. Um, the original one uh, demo I did last week was having you tilt the blade up and turn to do white, and tilt the blade down and turn to do black. Um, just in testing, it wasn't really as you know user-friendly that way. Um, so now the modes are actually going to be toggled. So what will happen is if your blade is parallel to start, you're going to be in color change in just the color wheel. If I wanted to add white or brighten the blade, all you're going to do is tip it up, bring it back to parallel. When you tip up, it's going to say white level. When you bring it back to parallel, that's when you'll turn through white, all the way up to white, all the way down to no white. If you want to go back to color, you'll tip it up again. It'll change it back to the color editing. If you wanted to dim the blade or make it near black, you'll tip down. It'll go into the dimming mode, then you bring it back parallel. Um, I just found when you're trying to actually pick like colors and brightnesses and stuff, it's easier to do with the dial if the blade is parallel. Um, so all the editing is in parallel, but to toggle the modes is just a down um, to go between black and color, and an up to go between white and color, um, with color always being default. Um, now also, if you go into the mode with your blade started up, it'll start in white. If you go into the mode with the blade pointing down, it'll start in black. Um, so if you just wanted to brighten your blade or dim it and not touch the colors, you can also do that. So it's got a lot of functionality just there. Um, in addition, um, I'm still tweaking out the dynamic controls, but the color wheel itself actually uh, responds uh, by how quickly you're turning the hilt and also how much of a turn you're making. So um, fast, quick movements will actually jump through the color wheel. Now, if I do it too quickly, it jumps a little too far, so I'm still finding a good zone for that. But if you're making really small incremental turns, it actually slows the color change to the point that lets you lock in specific colors. Um, and that was kind of something I just wanted to uh, make possible because every once in a while you're trying to hit this perfect color and you almost get there and you move a little bit too far. Um, so now if you want to really jump past colors like jump into blues or greens or reds, you'll do larger turns. And then when you get into that color zone that you want, you'll be able to do really small incremental turns to really dial it in. Um, so, and then the last piece of it is, uh, and this is the big difference between color changes, color editing is going to let you edit all the colors in a style, as long as the style is set up for it. Um, and I'm going to show that in a sec. So let's go into, so we're going to go into uh, edit mode, and I'm going to put the, the pommel near the camera just so you can hear the prompts, and then I'll move away. Edit mode, edit style. So I'm in edit mode. Delete presets, edit style, edit colors. So I'm going to go to edit colors. So uh, edit mode, there's another video on all that stuff. I'm going to, go to edit colors. Select color. So now I'm in select color. I'm, I'm going to try to not talk over the menu. Um, but what select, what's going to happen now is the uh, edit mode actually knows which colors of this style are editable. And um, so it's going to list all the ones that are set up in this blade to be edited. So I'll run through it, but I'm not going to talk. I'm going to let the uh, menu do the talking. Base color, alt color, blast color, clash color, lock up color, drag color, lightning block color, stab color, ignition color, retraction color, emitter color, base color. So base color, um, so I can kind of explain them, but they're, I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, but base color is the base color of your main blade effect. So I'm going to pick that. And it's going to go into just that color. And now, this is the dynamic control. So if I do larger turns and quicker turns, it's going to jump through that wheel a lot quicker. 
but if I want to go find a specific color, I can actually slow down and do really small turns. And get to just the right color. And then I can save it. Save. Select color. Now, um, let's go pick a different color. So, so the emitter color, that's this emitter effect. So there's a white emitter effect. Now the blue actually is probably a bad color to work against. Um, it's a little bright, but we'll pick it. Edit color. So now I'm going to edit this. What's going to happen is I'm keeping the base color that I chose active. So you can see the emitter color against it. Um, and we take the effects away just to kind of save memory on the board. Um, but so now this is a white effect. So white, if you just dial white through colors, it stays white. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually bring down the white level to get this into color. So we're going to tip up. White level. So I'm in white level. So now I can start pulling down the white. Minimum setting. And minimum setting for white means that it's pure color. It means there's no white added. So now I'm going to go tip up. I'll go into color mode. So now I'm going to edit in the colors. Oops, not too fast. Yeah, finding the sweet spot in this dial control is going to take me some time. So let's get to a nice color there. It's kind of complementary. So we'll lock that in. Save. Select color. So now I've got that orange effect. So let's pick a different color. Emitter color. Base color. Alt color. Last color. Let's do flash color, lock up color, drag color. So we're going to do drag color. So what's going to happen now? Drag color is obviously at the tip. Edit color. So hopefully it shows up again. White against blue is a little tough, but now so the tip is the editable region, and this is my base color. And again, we're going to tip up. White level. I'm going to pull that white level down. Minimum settings. All right. So we'll actually, what we'll do now is I'll show you some black settings. So I'll tip down. Black level. So now it's black level. So it's going to let me dim that. Minimum settings. And you can dim to about 10%. Uh, we don't dim to black just because when you go black, it actually turns the blade off. Um, so I set it to about 10. I mean, that's adjustable. But just in playing, that's pretty dim. So maximum setting again is pure color, so we'll dip down. So now I'm back to color. We can I'm just picking any color for now, so we'll save that. Save. So now I've got my drag color set. So let's pick one more. Lightning block color. Stab color. Actually let's go. Lightning block color. Drag color. Lock up color. Clash color. So we'll do our clash color. So now that's the bump in the middle, and these are representations. It's not your actual effect. It's just where, roughly, where that effect is. So again, it's base. It's set at white. So we're going to change that white. White level. I'm going to pull the white level down. And you can leave it white. I'm just trying to show all the functionality. Minimum settings. Edit color. So now I can edit the color. Go to the yellow. Again. Quicker turns will change it faster, slower will be a little more dialed in. Save, select color. So that's my clash color, so now. Oops. Oh, I'm in edit mode, I can't do clash. Sorry. Um, but so, and you can edit all of the colors individually. Um, and it's per, per preset. So each preset, you're going to edit all your colors individually. What that means is you can have, use your styles over and over and over again with copy preset, and then make copies of it, and then change all the colors and everything. So color change usually affects your base color. Color editing is going to let you edit any of the colors in your saber. And let me show another. So we're going to exit. Cancel. Exit. So we're going to go to a different preset that has different color editing on it. Select preset. So this one has other settings on it. So this one has a couple of uh, colors that weren't on that other one. So it's obviously got the base, 
Face color. Last color. Last. Flash color. Lock up color. Drag color. Lightning block color. Stab color. Prion color. So this has a prion color that I can edit. Ignition color. Retraction color. Post off color. And post off color. Those colors were not on the other blades, so those menu options weren't on that other style. Uh, but now let's go, we'll do post off. Edit color. So this is the post off preview, and I can choose the color I want for my post off. Uh, I'll do like a yellow. Oops, I turn that dial. I gotta. I think I have it jumping too fast. I might have to pull that down a little bit, but we'll pick that. Save, select color. And again, every color is individually editable. Now, uh, thanks to Frederick, we have those uh, the version where it kind of shows roughly what the effect is um, to let you edit it. Um, but so now I'm going to exit here. Cancel. And then you'll see my new post off color. So that's my new post off color. Um, and then, of course, um, so the, again, still a lot to work on, but the idea now uh, with this color editing is being able to set up your styles with all the effects that you want to have um, editable and then be able to use them over and over again and make all your edits, all your colors um, and everything done right from the Saber so you don't have to always reflash or reload your config um, for these changes. Um, plus, being able to edit on, particularly for like some of the effects like a lockup, a blast, a clash, against the base color, um, sometimes something might look good on screen in the editor, something might look, you know, okay um, in, in theory, but then when you put it on the actual blade, you know, depending on how your blade is um, diffused, the type of neopixels, all that other stuff, um, it might not look right. And then instead of having to go back and edit that blast or clash or lockup color uh, and load a new config, you can just tweak it out right on here and it's going to save everything. And again, it's individual by style and individual by preset, and if you have more than one blade, it's all individual by blade. So if I had, now this Saber I'm testing on only has one blade, but if I had two blades or a cross guard, I can edit all of the colors of all the effects individually on each so that I can really, you know, mix and match as much as I want. Um, and there's actually a lot more functionality coming to this. This is kind of still early um, but I wanted to represent, uh, give a kind of a quick run through of everything. But so um, in total, the menu system is being built out for actually 15 colors. So you're going to have your base color, which is the main blade effect. You're going to have your alt color, which is uh, it's it's kind of a multi-use. It's going to be dependent upon the user. Um, if you have a split blade, you can set your alt color to be one end and your base color to be another. If you have like the type of effects that have A B colors, you can set your alt color as the B color. Um, it really comes down to how you build the style, and obviously there'll be a write-up for that. Um, and uh, I feel like you guys like when my saber's on, so I'm going to leave the saber on. Um, hopefully it's not drying me out, but I feel like if I'm talking with a saber off, it bores the heck out of everybody. Um, but then you're also going to obviously have blast color, clash color, lockup, lightning block, drag, stab. Um, you have your ignition, uh, so that's the power of effect. So. When you see my power-up effect here, you're going to see uh, a white flash. That's the white unstable. I can change that color individually. Um, the retraction, which is the cool-off. So that's that white cool-off effect. Um, so that's editable individually, um, as well as post-off, which is that we did that already. And then there's actually a 15th uh, option, which is the off color. And that's primarily going to be for your crystal chambers um, or for your um, accent LEDs. If you wanted to set actually edit the color behavior when it's off, that's going to be the 15th option. Um, and it, it all will be, uh, so that's where the, the write-up's going to come in. Um, it's based on the style. So like I showed, if this blade only had like three or four editable colors, my color menu option would only be those editable colors. Um, or if you build a style out with all 15 edits, you're going to have 15 edit options within that uh, saber control. Um, so uh, still a lot more in the works. Um, obviously, like you've seen, the dial, uh, getting that dynamic control is, is definitely, it's, it's, it's going to take me some time because um, sometimes you get it working perfectly with the really fine tune, but then it takes forever to get to other colors, so then I kind of pump up the, uh, the jump menu capability, but then it, gets, it takes away, so it's a little give and take. Uh, the final product will be a lot better, um, but I've got it working pretty well, so it, it's a good step forward, um, but all the edit menus and everything are in place. Um, there's a few more pieces just to color editing that are actually in the works that I have to finish up. 
Um, and there's a few more things coming to edit mode, so still a lot to do. Uh, Frederick's been really great and helpful and a lot of ideas, and obviously a lot of the code is he's providing me or helping me fix my code. Um, but I think edit mode's going to be just awesome. I'm super excited about it. Um, uh, it. It is a little ways out still. There's still a lot left, of, a lot of work left to do, but I wanted to just share this with everybody. So color editing, um, all from the Saber, all your effects is coming pretty soon. Uh, or soon. Um, so, hope you enjoy. More to come.